our Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you for everything that you have given unto us. Thank you for this earth, for the air, the water, the mountains, the seas, the trees, and all the creatures which you have made us stewards of. As we celebrate the existence of the migratory birds today, we humbly ask your presence, guidance, and protection. May you give us wisdom to understand your message for us today. May you empower each of us to do our tasks well and to apply with conviction the things that we will be learning today. Forgive us for every shortcoming and help us to do the things that are pleasing to you. May you bless everyone's heart and continue to protect us and keep us in your loving embrace. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. to recognize our uh, dear participants today. So we would like to acknowledge the presence of our supportive and active partner agencies from Ozami City Environment and Natural Resource Office, Department of Interior and Local Government, Misamis Occidental, ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, Local Government Unit Representatives of Tanggub City, Oroqueta City, Municipalities of Bonifacio, Clarín, Todela, Sinacaban, Jimenez, Panaon, 
and Aloran. And to all our friends, faculty, staff, and students of Misamis University who are watching live via Misamis University Facebook page, thank you for celebrating with us. Your presence and participation today shows how much you care about migratory birds and our environment. So we have been seeing birds almost every day of our lives, right? And uh, they are with us in this planet ever since the world began. I would like to address this question to our SK chairman. SK chairman from uh, various local government units. Um, can you please turn on your cameras, please? So that we may see your beautiful and handsome faces. Um, we have here the SK chairman uh, from the city of Tangu. Do we have? Do we have also from the municipality of Clarin? May I request all the SK chairman to kindly turn on your camera so that we can see your handsome and beautiful faces. Okay, so I would like to address this question to you. If you were given a chance to live a second life, what bird would you like to become and why? You may state the local name of the bird and then you may state your reason at least um, one sentence. Can we have the SK chairman from the municipality of Aloran? Sir? Hello. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Uh, if given a chance that I will be reborn or to be a bird, I would love to be a crow. Maybe because uh, in the eyes of the kids or in the eyes of the many, they are, uh, they have, there is a misconception about crow that uh, they were perceived as bad, but in fact, they just um, do their part or they have a, uh, so called this, uh, relevant to the uh, balance of the ecosystem. That would be good. Okay, very good. That's a really wonderful answer. Thank you, uh, Honorable Ace John Mutia. So now can we have the representative from the city of Tangu? Do we have any representative from Tangu City? Or should we call on the representative from Tudela, Honorable Joven Ramilite? Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Hi. Um, can you please turn on your camera? So I will repeat the question for you. If you were given a chance to live a second life, what bird would you like to become and why? Pwede ka maggamit sa bisaya nga ngalan sa langgam nga inung gusto. Dayon, palimog og istorya nga nung ganahan ka ato nga langgam. Banog mam banog. Banog. Nga nung ganahan makamahimong banog. Ah, para kwan. Kay 
maka kuan ma, dali ra siya makakita og kanang na kanun so maning kamot siya kuan makalupad siya taas pud siya mulupad Okay, wonderful. Tinuod nga habog og lupad ang banog og dali pud siya makakita og iyang pagkaon. Very well said. Um uh, Honorable Ramilite, thank you very much. And thank you for sharing with us your wonderful answers. At this point, let us hear the opening remarks from the youthful and dynamic director of Misamis University Community Extension Program, Environmental Planner, Grace V. Villanueva. Okay, so good day world. Good morning, Misamis Occidental Young Leaders. Today is a very important date for one of your numerous constituents, but one that cannot vote nor speak, but can fly and do important things for us humans. But first, let me express our gratitude to the Secretariat of the East Asian Australasia Flyway Partnership, the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Department of Interior and Local Government, partner local government unit and the administration of Misamis University for making this virtual celebration of World Migratory Bird Day 2021 possible here in Misamis Occidental, Philippines, despite the difficulties due to COVID-19. Since our resource persons will speak very clearly on this World Migratory Bird, may I instead ask all of you to think about the parallel lives a perspective on the similarities of this amazing world migratory bird with another well-known remarkable migratory being, the overseas Filipino worker who went abroad to work and make a living in the Middle East, nearby Asian countries, Malaysia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan. Others go to European countries, in Italy, in UK, and of course, to North America, particularly the United States, the preferred destination of most Filipino immigrants. So just like our overseas Filipinos, these migratory birds migrate to look for food to avoid harsh winter, to roost, and simply to survive. Hence, just like the countries where Filipinos go to find jobs and other opportunities so that they and their families can eat, can live, survive, and prosper. Unfortunately, some overseas Filipinos in some other countries were abused and some were unable to make it home alive. Just like some migratory birds who suffer the same fate, they are being chased, captured, and killed with slingshots and rifles. Thus, we're also not able to continue the flyway. Although, let me emphasize it. Majority of the overseas Filipinos do come home to better lives. Since these host countries that offer numerous opportunities also took very good care of our overseas Filipinos and migrants. And like these migratory birds, most of the countries they visit, they created laws and protected areas for them to be safe and thus can continue their journey back home. So, as leaders, you are expected to please widen your understanding on the relationship of man that needs nature to flourish, deepen your comprehension of ecosystems and biodiversity for our survival, and obtain higher viewpoints that you as a leader needs to take care also of your not human constituents. We hope that after attending this virtual event, on the next months and years, you will do everything in your capacity as leaders to protect these migratory birds with legislation, identify and declare your own protected areas for them because just like the Filipinos who are needed abroad for their homes, industries, healthcare, we also need these birds to eat away the pests, poop, scratch to fertilize our wetlands, and those so many other services for us. We humans need 
them. Remember that? Thus, show the famed Filipino hospitality and take care that these migratory birds are not harmed when they are here in our wetlands in Misamis Occidental. Again, welcome. Thank you for being here with us today. Sing, fly, and soar like these birds. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Grace, for that um, very wonderful um, opening remarks. And thank you also for your words of wisdom to every one of us. Okay. And at this juncture, let us welcome one of the active community extension facilitators of the Misamis University Community Extension Program, Forrester Jerusalem Kalago, for the brief rationale of the World Migratory Bird Day. Good morning. Happy World Migratory Bird Day, everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Despite this pandemic situation, we are experiencing for more than a year now. While that migratory birds are protected species under the International Bond Convention in 2017, today, May 8, 2021, we celebrate World Migratory Bird Day with the theme, Pag-awit, Paglupad, Pataas, Sama sa Osaka Langgam. This global celebration is a biannual activity that is regularly observed on the second Saturday of May and October. The main campaign for this activity is to raise awareness of the conservation of migratory birds and their habitats and the need for international cooperation to conserve and protect them. Misamis University, in partnership with the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, DILG, and ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, took an initiative to join this cele global celebration. With funding support from the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership Secretariat, which will capacitate you, the Sangoni Ang Kabataan Chairman of the Coastal Barangays in Misamis Occidental, as ambassadors and ambassadresses of your respective barangays to conserve and protect migratory wildlife birds in your area. The objectives of this webinar lecture workshop is aligned with the RA10. 742, where Sangguni Ang Kabataan members are mandated to participate in activities related to conservation, protection, and management of the environment. Today's activity is composed of two parts, the lecture and workshop. The lecture includes of the importance, habitats, flyways of migratory birds, and its fines and penalties. The workshop will be participated by the ISKI chairman of the selected coastal areas in Misamis Occidental where they will create an action plan for the conservation and protection of migratory birds in the respective areas. Thank you and good luck with your endeavors as young conservationists of Misamis Occidental. Thank you, Forrester Jerusa for that very informative background about the World Migratory Bird Day. So we would like to recognize the presence of our keynote speakers this morning, might as well as our uh, City of Azamis Environment and Natural Resource Officer, Forrester Gilri Kapatuan. Good morning, sir. And also, good morning, good morning. to your um, staff. Thank you for joining us this morning. So we would like to show you a few educational materials that the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership Secretariat has officially used in promoting the World Migratory Bird Day collaboratively made by Misamis University and various other partners for this event.
Okay, so those are the official educational materials or promotional materials that the EAAFP Secretariat has officially used in promoting the World Migratory Bird Day. You may access these environmental materials in their website at www.eaaflyway.net. You may also check www.worldmigratorybirdday.org. And for more activities and updates about Musamis University, please visit our website at mu.edu.ph and our Facebook page, Misamis University. And now, let us all witness the inspirational messages from two empowered women who both excel in their respective fields, are visionary leaders, and are environmentally concerned. Let us hear first from our beloved Misamis University President, Dr. Karen Belina Feliciano de Leon. My sincere greetings to Dr. Teresa Mondita Eslim, Director for the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity from the East Asian Austral Asian Flyway Partnership, Chief Executive Officer, Mr. Doug Watkins, and the Communications Officer, Ms. Vivian Fu. From our partner government agency, Forrester Dennis Awab, Development Management Officer for Central Assamis, Forrester Gilri D. Kabatuan, Community and Environment Natural Resources Officer of Assamis, Officers of the ENR and DILG, our young leaders of Misamis Occidental. Ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant day to everyone. On behalf of Misamis University and the Misamis University Community Extension Program, I welcome all of you, especially the young leaders of our province, to this virtual program for the World Migratory Bird Day 2021. Your presence is truly special, and it shows that even with our present health problem of COVID-19, you are showing concern for this world we live in. Today, we will learn more about the migrant birds and their need for protection while they are here in our community. They need to be fed, they need to roost and survive while away from the harsh climate of their homeland. We can say, that like our countrymen who leave the Philippines to work, for, for, to work abroad, they eventually return home. So these migratory birds follow the same routine. Hence, these birds, these creatures of God should be welcome and we should extend to them our hospitality until they start their journey back home, fit, strong, and healthy. My hope, is that after this activity, you will take home with you not only what you will learn from our resource persons and the information presented in the materials, but you will strive to better protect these migratory birds in your respective barangays. You can prepare and sponsor protection ordinances, rally other young members of your community to participate in clean up activities, and promote this advocacy in social media. Thank you all for your presence and for your concern. Let us all work together for the betterment of our communities and the world. Thank you very much, Dr. Karen, for the inspiring words for all of us. At this time, let us hear the message from Dr. Teresa Mandita Eslim, the Executive Director of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. Maayong adlaw sa inyong tanan. Dr. Karen Delina F. De Leon, President of Misamis University. Forrester Gilri D. Cabatuan, Senro, Osami City. Professor Yunilin L. Villantes, Speaker, College of Arts and Science, Misamis University. Ms. Grace Villanueva, Director of the Misamis University Community Extension Program, or the MUSEP. 
SK Chairpersons of Misamis Occidental, faculty and staff of Misamis University. The ASEAN Center for Biodiversity congratulates MUSEP, the local government and the Sangguniang Kabataan leaders in Misamis Occidental for this timely event on the 2021 World Migratory Bird Day. We are excited to learn that this event will contribute to forming young leaders who can help raise awareness, knowledge, and skills towards the protection of the environment. Misamis Occidental, where Mount Malindang, one of the ASEAN Heritage Parks, is located, is truly a bastion of biodiversity, and we must all work hard together to conserve it for the sake of our future generation. The Anthropos, or the slowing down of human activities at the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, has afforded us time to reflect. The crises that we are facing today have not only brought much socioeconomic insecurity, it also opened our eyes to the innate link between human and nature. The diversity of species that either inhabit or visit key biodiversity areas, such as our migratory birds, play key roles in ensuring the integrity of ecosystems from which we derive vital services such as food, water, and medicines. Their ability to transcend boundaries make them effective ambassadors for strengthening cooperation across the lands and the people within their flyways. During these challenging times, we turn to nature for comfort and respite. When we are able to hear clearly the birds thrilling and singing, our surroundings appear restful and safe, soothing our hearts and our minds. We establish a connection with nature and our spirits are restored. Let us allow the birds to sing their songs, soar freely and thrive without threats to their existence. Let us recognize and treasure our wonderful connection and fortify our resolve to continue to protect and conserve our precious biodiversity. This World Migratory Bird Day, let us sing, fly, soar like a bird. Mawit, lumipad, sumalimbay, gaya ng isang ibon. Salamat po. Indeed, both are the epitomes of beauty and wisdom that continue to inspire us not only to excel in our profession, but also to care for our natural resources. For our dear viewers from our live stream via Facebook of Misamis University, please stay connected as we will post the link of the evaluation form, which you can fill up later to get a certificate on this international event. So now we are at the very core of our activity for today. So get your thinking cap on and let us all together learn about migratory birds. Our first speaker today will talk about the essential information about migratory birds. She is a researcher and a full-time assistant professor three of College of Arts and Sciences Natural Science Department of Misamis University. She finished her degrees in Bachelor of Science in Biology with Latin Honors and Master of Science in Biology in Mindanao State University, Iligan Institute of Technology. And she is currently pursuing Doctor in Philosophy, major in Biology in the same university as a DOSD scholar. She has published several researches in local and international journals, mostly on wildlife and environment. Let us all welcome Professor Yunalin Labajo Villantes. Thank you very much for that um, introduction from our beautiful MC. Thank you very much. The air is packed with birds, lovely, tender, intelligent birds to whom life could be a song. To the ever brilliant president of Misamis University, Dr. Karen Belina Feliciana de Leon. To the executive director of ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, Dr. Teresita Mundeta Islim. To the dynamic 
Community Environment Natural Resources Officer of Busami City, Parister Gilri Kabatuan, to the officers of DILG, to the young leaders, our SK Chairman of Misamis Occidental, to the very energetic faculty and staff of Misamis University, and to all of you who participated in this webinar lecture workshop, happy migratory birthday 2021. Good morning, everyone. Maayong buntag sa inyong tanan. Each year, bird watchers and ornithologists celebrate World Migratory Birthday to raise awareness about migratory birds and the need to protect them. I am very honored to be one of the keynote speakers on this momentous event with other webinars, national and international, on this very day. Ladies and gentlemen, I will talk about migratory birds, what you need to know. This is the logo of the World Migratory Bird Day 2021 with the theme, Sing, Fly, Soar Like a Bird. And this the year's World Migratory Bird Day, which is annual global campaign dedicated to raising awareness of migratory birds and the need for international cooperation to conserve them. For this year, as what they mentioned earlier, the phenomena of bird song and the bird flight is a way to inspire and connect people of all ages, just like our SK chairman for this morning. In the world, the shared desire to celebrate migratory birds and to unite in common. Ladies and gentlemen, before I will formally start my talk, I want you to relax and fasten your seatbelt as we fly together with the migratory birds. Indeed, it's bird migration is one of the great wonders of the natural world. A huge variety of birds make the journey. So based on the video, pagkadaghan na kayo sa mga birds, nakakam up sila o mga different shapes with the background music. Just like the tiny Rufus hummingbird, hummingbird in, the, in, the, in the slide, that migrates up and down the North American continent. While the Arctic tern, the bird below, migrates from pole to pole, from North Pole to South Pole. In fact, roughly one in five bird species will migrate in a year. Next slide. So the question is, why do birds migrate? For a fun fact that Arctic tern travels 49,700 miles in a year between their Arctic breeding grounds and the Antarctic coast, so their annual journey is known to be the longest bird migration in the world. So in Anna Kalayu mo travel an Arctic tern. Now, why this Arctic tern needs to migrate for that very long distance? For a bird traveling hundreds or thousands of miles between its breeding and non-breeding ranges is a difficult, perilous journey, a very challenging journey and one that not all birds survive. So why do birds migrate? What reasons that send these millions of birds into the risky skies one or two times each year? There is more than one single reason for different birds to, to migrate, but it all comes down to survival. The need to survive, dapat silang mabuhi. Not just for each individual bird, but also for the families, for they hope to raise. So without a reason to migrate, birds would, would have been more challenging lives than making these excruciating journeys. So kung dili sila mo biyahe, mas lisod pa di ay ilahang kinabuhi sa ilahang nesting area. If no birds, birds migrated, food supplies in the ranges would be rapidly depleted, especially during the nesting season and many chicks and adults will, will be starved. There will be competition in the nesting sites since ang food kay scarce naman and predators would be attracted. So ang predators kani ang posible mas madagdago pa na mga mananap that will eat these young ones or this even adult birds. Especially for those vulnerable ones. So it is for these two reasons Pagkaon food and breeding that many birds migrate. But those reasons are far more complicated 
than they see them. Food may be the key to a regular migration, but merds migrate for other reasons which relates to helping their offspring to survive. Example is the climate. Klima. Birds have evolved different types of plumage. So, money ang katong birds' feathers, no? To survive different climates. And changing in these climates can affect their migration. So, many birds will, le will leave Arctic breeding grounds when temperature is so deep, very cold. So, katong nasa mga Arctic, mulib gihapon kung cold na jug ka siya. And for those na nasa tropics, kung init kayo, still mulib gihapon sila from their area to more um, comfortable areas. Semel, um, other reason is about predators. So, habitats with abundant food sources year-round also attract a greater number of predators na pwede mo threaten sa lang nest. So, birds that migrate to different habitats can avoid these predators, giving their young ones a better chance to survive. Another reason is because of the disease. Any large group of birds crammed in one type of habitat is so susceptible to parasites and diseases. So, that can climate decimate thousands of birds in a short period of time. So, and diseases can and do occasionally devastate the breeding colonies of these birds. That's why birds that disperse to different locations have less chance of spreading disease to their entire population, including their new offspring. Next slide, please. So, kanusa o giunsa pag migrate, pag biyahe sa mga birds. When and how do birds migrate? So we have these three factors or four factors that will trigger bird migration. Number one, environment and physiology. Okay? So millions of migratory birds move from a warm winter range to a summer breeding range each year. Okay? So as I said earlier, kung napuyo sila sa bugnaw, kung kayo, they need to migrate. If they used to live, in a what's this in a in a summer or in the tropical area kumu in it then they need to leave sa mas dili rapog kaayo in it another is because of the circ annual rhythm and daylight will also trigger migration so before a bird can migrate it must be physically ready of course like you kailang biyahe they must be physically ready in both spring and fall birds put on weight storing fat in the body cavity and beneath the skin so daghan kaayo mo mold mo replace ilang flight feathers so that their feathers are in peak condition for extended flight especially those long distance travelers and they're going to build flight muscles for strength and endurance so these changes are brought on by a combination of the birds circ annual rhythm or known as a natural annual cycle and the shift in the hours of daylight that signals a change of season. Another is the weather. Weather also influences bird migration. So birds respond to weather conditions as well as light when deciding when to depart a summer or winter range. So ginabantayan niya po nila kung kanus ang panahon kung pwede na ba sila mobiyahe or dili pa. An early spring with unusually warm temperatures can trigger early departure and early breeding. Likewise, extended bad weather, kung dili maayo ang panahon, pwede po mo delay sa ilahang pagbiyahe. So birds generally wait for good weather with favorable winds. They avoid rain, they avoid overcast conditions, and winds that might blow them, of course. Another is favorable tailwind. Birds to commence, magsugod or magstart sa ilang departure in large numbers only when they have a favorable tailwind. In North America, the winds north in spring and south in autumn are ideal to assist seasonal migrations. So once started, however, only very bad weather will stop them. So mo po na ilang yapas 
Okay? So, at the time na naay favorable tailwind, possibly dili kayo ing ana or namanggali ginagmay na bad weather, dili kayo daghan. So, many weathers fly high when migrating because of prevailing winds at higher altitudes and also because the cold at these altitudes help them disperse all the heat being generated by their flight muscles. So the next question is, how do birds migrate such long distances? So the reason is birds exploit the winds to their favor so they can go to the distance by burning minimal fuel. So based on the video, diligid kayo straight mulupad ang mga langgam. Okay? Na ay paubos, mukalit ni manslag pataas, na ay pawala, mukalit ni manslag patoo. Because of the wind, okay? They they are checking the wind if it's their favor. Kumbaga, nagpa um they are looking kung asa paingon ang ang direction sa wind so that dili sila mo extend or mo exert more effort na makapalus sa ilahang energy faster. So they may shift altitude to find the best wind. Okay, pwede sa magpaubos, pwede magpataas. Winds at high altitude may blow in the opposite direction from wind on the ground and usually are blowing strongly. Larger birds rely on thermals or the hot airs and they are going to migrate on daytime. There are few birds that fly non-stop, some for several days, covering enormous distances, but most birds break journey at staging post. Why? Because this vital aspect of being able to make such long trips is to lay down enough fat reserves. Okay? They need to take a break, they need to pahuay para maka para eat more and to gain more para makareserva na po for the next trip. Okay? Their feathers must be in top condition for these long trips. Different species molt at different times. For most shorebirds, it is just after breeding and before the migration to wintering ground. Next slide, please. So the next question is, how do migrating birds find their way? Nga nung yun sa manggit nila pagkabalo na diri sila muagi o diri diri dapita. Tinood yun na ang mga langgam kay bright. Okay? Birds are intelligent. Traveler yun sila sama sa usak katao sa unang panahon. Nga naman. Studies suggest birds orientate themselves to the compass points. Okay? Dili lang ang tao, dili lang human beings na compass, but birds do have also. Using the position of the sun during the day and the stars at night. They can also sense magnetic north. In addition, they use other clues such as visual layout of the land. So naman sila sa imabaw, then they can kita kung asa man ang mga mountain ranges, asa man ang mga areas kung pwede asa sila pwede mo break. They can even smell, okay? They're going to smell the sea. They're going to listen to the sound of the waves on the shore and the winds through mountain passes. The most amazing aspect of bird migration is that the location, the route, and perhaps even the techniques are hardwired into their brains. So, yung ana sila kabright. That is how they are intelligent. Many migrating birds abandon their young as soon as they fledge. And a short time later, the young make the migration on their own. Of course, so kung na sila yung mayang, kung magdaldala pa sila, again, the journey is very perilous, it's very challenging. So maybe the, the young cannot, cannot make their own, cannot survive during the journey. Next slide, please. Typically, migration follows a north-south axis with birds moving to milder climates at lower latitudes for the duration of their non-breeding season. The energetic costs associated with migration mean that the birds are under pressure to use the shortest possible route. However, the precise course taken will depend on the weather patterns, also the geographical features that they will encounter. So thus, routes often follow mountain ranges, water courses and coastlines, avoid larger bodies of open water, and take advantage of prevailing wind patterns and abrupts. 
as a result, a number of species often share analogous flyways. So when we say analogous flyways, is, there is a comparable um, certain aspects or, simil or perform similar functions. Next slide, please. So there are eight migra migratory bird flyways. So how did these migratory routes become established? The International Weather Society Group identifies eight multiple species flyways that broadly describe the migration of waders. Mga langgam na tagas og sungo, so muni ang mga waders. So these have subsequently been developed into generalized global flyways for all fully migratory bird species. So in America, there are three flyways, the Pacific, Central, and Atlantic Americas. Okay, connecting the high Arctic Tierra del Fuego, the southernmost tip of the South American mainline. Collectively, the three Palearctic African flyways, the East Asia Fly, East Atlantic Flyway, Mediterranean Black Sea Flyway, the East Asia Africa Flyway, which constitute the world's largest bird migration system with over 2 billion passerines. Animal gagmay na mga mga langgam from their breeding grounds in Europe and Central and Western Asia to winter in tropical Africa each year. The Central Asian Flyway is the shortest flyway in the world. Okay? And the East Asia-Australia Flyway that connects Northeast Asia with Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand and is used by over 50 million migratory water birds. Since we belong to this East Asia Australia flyway, let's focus, let's take a look of this East Asia Australia flyway. Next slide, please. So the East Asia Australia flyway has approximately 37 countries. Okay. Kung diin, there is 1,184 important bird areas identified. Next slide, please. Okay. Looking closely of these 492 species, seven of these are critically endangered. Ten are endangered, critically endangered na kung ang next level ano is extension, so dapat yun din nato siyang protektahan. Ten are endangered, 33 are vulnerable, 14 years threatened, and 428 are locally concerned by IUCN. Next slide, please. So kung naka-experience na ba mo mabiyahe to America or very layo na mga areas? Next slide please. Di ba mag-connecting flight man mo? Sama sa mga langgam, just like migratory birds na nagbiyahe, dili na sila diretso sa ilang destinasyon. But naa na sila nga stopovers. So unsa maning mga stopovers? Previous slide please. These are the places that provide abundant food to migratory birds for refueling as well as roosting places, pahulayan. So some or several birds may be deridirit sa biyahe, but most of the migratory birds will stop in a certain place to rest and to refuel themselves. So ang katong ilang gikaon gikan sa ilang place of origin, gikulangan o diligid maigo, not enough to, for them to reach the destination. So they need to stop to look for food and take some rest and save more energy for the completion of their journey. Next slide, please. So, asa mani ang mga stopovers? Sa mga langgam na nagsunod sa East Asia Australian Flyway, isa ang Pilipinas nagiagian. Philippines is one of the stopovers. Based on the table, there are 10 important sites we're in the Nauhan Lake National Park, as well as the Olango Island Wildlife Sanctuary, are very popular of these migratory birds. Next slide, please. So, swerty kaita, we are very lucky nagibisitahan ta sa mga international travelers. So, ang mga migratory birds nagikan pa sa lagyo nga dapit from other parts of the world. Unsa giday ni sila ka importante why they are very important nga nung we need to give them importance na sila dili man taga diri they are just traveler they are just tourists ladies and gentlemen migratory birds are known to be indicators 
Tima Ilhan para sa flyway region as they use different biomes and habitats and as they face different pressures along the migration route. Moreover, migratory birds play several essential and dispensable roles na adeslay papil sa ilang mga stopovers in the ecosystems, lugar o kinaiyahan where they reside in and they were travel through. Such birds raising broods end up kay mo pahuway lang ta sila, diha lang ta sila mangitlog, acting as pest control agents by devouring insects and other organisms that harm the environment and crops. So katong mga nangitlog, instead ng mga nangitlog raon ta sila, mukhaon po dahi sila dito sa mga pest, mga dangan na makita sa itong mga kahumayan o sa kaumahan. Locus, say for example, the locus attack, katubitang gagmay na grasshopper, is one such disaster that stems from that absence of migratory birds. Another is, migratory birds help in dispersal of seeds, pollination, leading to the maintenance of biodiversity along the routes. Ducks, katung mga ducks, can transport fish eggs in their guts to new water bodies. So the droppings of birds, ilang mga tai, also known as guano, are rich in nitrogen and act as organic fertilizers sa ilahang stopovers. So eggshells can add calcium and other minerals to the soil. Migratory birds, both prey and predator bases in ecosystems seasonally and can therefore have an ecologically impact. Ecological impact. So prevalence of migratory birds helps analyze the state of environment in an area. So maunang gitawag sila og bioindicators. In fact, billions of migratory birds have continued to sing, fly and soar between their breeding and non-breeding sites. So during pandemic, makita siguro nato sa mga daghang mga lugar, especially katong sa Manila, daghan kaayo slow down many activities by limiting our movements. Pero daghan kaayo ang mga tao been listening and watching birds like never before. For many people around the world, bird song has also been a source of comfort. Diba sa iyo sa buntag, kung makadungog tag na ay mga birds, nag-tweet, tweet, 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 tira, makarelax ang atong ginhaw. Relax ka itong pamati. Enjoy during the pandemic. So kun birds connect people to each other and to nature as they remain in place. So kumusta makha ang migratory birds diri sa Pilipinas? Unsa naman ang status? Napabay min bisita nato sa panahon karon. So ladies and gentlemen, there are five important informations na tay lima ka importante nga information that you need to know about bird migration in the Philippines. Next slide please. Number 1, migratory birds visit us every year. Okay? So Walay paltos, okay? Naatay bisita taga tuig. So as part of the East Asian Australian Flyway, the Philippines Reserve receives annual visits from numerous migratory birds coming from China, Japan, Siberia, and other parts of the world. Iyan na mention kaganina that naapaday tayo. Mayroon pa tayong pag-asa, di ba? Na na record ang critically endangered species na originally nakit or originally from the Russia nakita sa Negros so so kung ka mo gusto makakita og daghang mga migratory birds okay you can uh, visit ang mga lugar okay from September going to November or February to April so you can visit this uh, the Nauhan Lake the Longo Island and even other or even Misamis Occidental where we can find these migratory birds on this on this month of the year. Next slide, please. There's one report okay, by the Manila Times nag-ingon, half a million tourists now in the Philippines. So, imagine tough ducks during migration in Nauhan. So, that was um, you can you observe it or maybe you watched that one in the video earlier. Na pagkadaghan na sa tufted duck was observed sa Ohan Lake. So, that was written in the Manila Times. And even, sa ikaduha po na picture, last January 2020, dagan kayo na visit sa Central Luzon wetland areas ng Adtong 
or last year lang. So, ing ana kadagan ang atong tourists, our visitors in every year. Next slide, please. Number two, Philippines plays a significant role in bird migration. The important bird biodiversity areas or the ibas are the key sites for the conservation of bird species. So we have 117 important bird areas that spanning 32,302 square kilometers. And of these IBAs, 47 are part of the protected areas, 23 are partially protected, and 47 are unprotected. So, pari-pariha lang ang protected o unprotected. So, very important bird areas. So, uh, so, what are these IBAs? So, these are habitats for large number of these birds at a time, making them crucial sites for bird conservation. So, kani ang posible stopovers, mga Pinoy Anan sa migratory birds, nagikan pa sa laing lugar na dapat para i-conservar para ani na mga langgam. So, as you can see in the map, okay, as you can see in the map, a lot of IB... Previous slide, please. A lot of IBAs, which is one of it, is the Misamis Occidental. And here in our area, in Misamis Occidental, we, we can observe the bagumbang or no sorry the mal malaubang bagumbang mangrove reserve na naay taas kaayo na stretch sa mangrove okay na pinoy anan possibly mapuy an sa tuang mga nagkalalaing migratory birds na putay daghan kay mga wetlands mga basakan kung asa makakita tag daghan mga tulabong meaning kana mo ay punoy anan sa tuang mga langgam so, daghan kay tag ika-offer sa Pilipinas, labi na sa tuang Misamis Occidental. Next slide, please. Number three, there are over 600 species of birds in the Philippines and quite of them are migratory. Okay? Some examples are the gray, the gray heron, the purple heron, falcons, okay, in the, and the Philippine millard. Okay, sa tua, sa tuang malaubang Bonifacio Mangrove Reserves and the Sinacaban Wetlands, naputay at tuang kaugalingo na ning bisita, no? Sama sa little egrets, sa tuang mga intermediate egret, sa great egret, gray heron, and the purple heron. Nagkalaing-klaing klase na mga, na mga tulabong, okay? Kanisiyan, uh, this, this record was conducted by the ASEAN Waterfall Census uh, by the Wetlands International for 2021. Okay? So, basi sa ilang survey, kanina mga klase sa mga tulabong na observe during sa pagkandak sa census. So, dili lang dahil ang mga tao ang ikandak Philippine, by the Philippine Statistics Authority, but as well as the migratory birds. So, kung naka-observe mo ni mga langgama sa inyong mga basakan, sa inyong katunggan, sa inyong katubigan, sa inyong mga tagsa-tagsa ka mga lugar, so, swerte mo na amoy mga turista na nang visit ninyo kung angayan na itong protektahan. Next slide, please. Number Next is the presence of migratory birds is a welcome sign. So kung naan na itong makita diha sila, dili day kita nag-welcome, no? O kung pwede ang, ang, ang natural habitat ang nag-welcome sa ilaha. Okay. So what does it mean when migratory birds start to pop up in your area? Birds tend to stay if an area has an abundant food to feed on and as long as they remain undisturbed during their visit. Okay. Kanina statement by the executive director, Teresa Mundita Lim. Okay. So, siya ni Gaingon. So, birds to stay in your area if there is abundant food. So, if you can see these different tulabongs in your basakan, in your mangrove, then there is food in your area. So when migratory birds frequent a specific area, it means that the area exhibits conditions that are conducive for migration. Nindot ang panahon na naadiha, kay nakapahuway sila. They can roost on that area. They can rest on that area. So kung naan mo yung mga daghang na-observe the migratory birds sa inyong mga lugar, nagpasabot lang na naay mga daghang kanunun diha, that that area has a good condition for them to risk, for them to feed on, for them to refuel. As like as what Dr. Teresa said, er Dr. Uh, Dr. Teresa said earlier, 
And also in that video, stopovers are just like gas stations. So they're going to refuel for the completion of their journey. So sama sa panahon na brand out, tibok adlaw, di ba? We're going to find areas na pwede asa ta magpabugnaw, okay? Asa ta pwede maka-find maka o foam fort, just like them. So if you have or if you observe these different birds in your area, then your area is a welcome sign. However, there are lots of threats along, along the flyway, okay? As mentioned by the video, no? The ganking species sa una, but because of several threats, the number declines. Timanin niyo na naay many bird species migrate in order to survive. However, migration is a perilous journey and involves a wide range of threats. Only a small number of birds are actually threatened by natural events. Sad but true human activities, kita, are the source for most dangers migrating birds are exposed to. And as diverse people and their habits in different countries are so the threats of birds are. The loss of habitats due to pollution, as you can see in the picture, a lot of plastics, garbage are thrown in different wetlands, in seas, okay, that will impact okay, on, the on the migration, on the migratory birds. Okay. Settlement, agriculture, hunting affects the number of migratory birds. The infectious diseases will also affect the survival of the migratory birds. Climate change is one of the most serious public health threats facing by the nation, but few people are aware of how it can affect the migratory birds. Children, the elderly and communities living in poverty are the most vulnerable also as well as the migratory birds. The last piece. However, Philippines has laws protecting these migratory birds, such as the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act or the Republic Act 914. So, dili lang kayo niya ko yun i-describe in detail because naag yun authority na mo describe ani, na mo discuss ani, our next keynote speaker. So, what shall, I, what shall we do? Okay, so these are some examples. We need to have long-term monitoring programs. IEC, this is one, okay? The awareness campaign. Fishing activities should be minimized, especially during migration. Sustainable organic agriculture. Conservation sa ilang mga Pinoyanan. Hopefully, there will be banning of single-use plastics. Strict adherence to conservation, okay? Promoting eco-clubs and citizen initiatives are only some of many things that we can do and again, we have the next speaker that we're going that will discuss on what are things that we need to do. Daghan pa kita ngayon buhaton o ipailalong pa ni pag-ayo sa atong sunod na speaker. Next slide, please. So sa di pa kumatapos sa kung talk before I will end my talk, I want to share to you my meaning, my personal meaning of bird, where I gave each letter letter a meaning, which is B for bodacious, which stands bold or admirable ang mga langgam kay walay mahadlok walay wala gyuy hadlok na buhaton ug ang ayan nilang buhaton para maka survive they are bold to travel even miles and despite so many pressures and challenges during the travel period and because of that it's inspiring to study know and be aware about them since they are relevant in the ecosystem they connect people as they soar and sing. They can help in maintaining the nature healthy as pest control agents and pollinating agents. So they are dynamic. However, they are under threats, especially by us. Human, so let us not wait for the time that will not have tourists anymore, especially in the Philippines, especially in Misamis Occidental, that will visit us every year. Let's work together to protect and conserve the migratory birds and their habitats. Let's work together to achieve more. Now that we know what we need to know, let's cooperate to achieve success. And with that, daghang salamat and once again, maayong buntag. Good morning, everyone.
Thank you very much, Professor Yunalin, for that enlightenment. And I am sure that all of us have learned a thing or two about the migratory birds. You see, guys, how far the migratory birds have to travel using only their wings, only to survive. So travel goals, kayo ang mga migratory birds, no? But we have to remember that their journey is not easy. Let us take care of our environment to maintain the abundance of food to welcome the migratory birds. With that, I am sure that all of us now appreciate migratory birds more than ever. Okay, so at this point, I would like to ask the participants to open your browsers and kindly type in www.slido.com and then type in the code 323941 to access the the short uh, interactive game so we will be giving you uh, perhaps how many minutes, you, Mam Yuna? How? <laughs> uh, we will give you one minute to accomplish the short uh, quiz that Professor Yunalin has pre prepared for everyone. Okay, have everybody accessed or have everybody opened your browsers already? So again, kindly open your browsers and then type in www.slido.com. I have also um, put it in the chat box for your reference. I have um, the website there and also the code. So we have prepared five questions for you guys to answer. So according to Mom Grace, we will give a prize for the uh, participants who will answer the quiz perfectly. So kinsa tong maka perfect sa quiz will receive a prize. Ihatod ra namo. <laughs> First three perfect answers will receive a prize. Uh, in the form of 100 peso worth of a load. Kindly, uh, can uh, the participants who have already accessed the quiz to please raise your hand? Can you please raise your hand for those who have accessed the short quiz? Okay, I have uh, seen... Uh, the SK from Barangay Poblacion, Sinakaban. SK Chairman from Aloran. Faculty from Maritime Education, sir. And then from our partner from the NR Senro Azamis also. And then SK Federated, okay. How about the others? Okay, Ma'am Yuna, um, we will share screen for the answers and then kindly correct their answer okay so mom jersam will share her screen to see your answers and then miss yuna will correct or will check your answers am i going to check it now Yes, the, answer is, the answer is letter B. The main reason why birds migrate is food as well as breeding. So breeding area. So the answer should be letter B. Okay, next question. Okay, so, Ma'am Yu, can, can you please uh, repeat? Okay, so the answer for this second question is letter C. 
Kingfisher is not a migratory bird, only mallards and herons. Thank you. Next question. Okay, so the answer is letter C for this question. Pollution is one of the threats to migratory birds. Next question. Okay, so for this question, the answer is letter D. All of the activities will increase awareness among different groups regarding migratory birds. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Yuna. Welcome. Uh, we would love to. We would love to answer, or Miss Yuna would love to answer some questions from the participants if they have any. So our beloved participants, you may raise your questions now regarding the essential information about the migratory birds that Miss Yuna have just discussed earlier. So just kindly raise your hand if you have a question. We can also entertain questions from our audiences in our live stream via Misamis University Facebook account. Um, yes, uh, SK Chairman of Aluran, Honorable Ace John Mutia, kindly turn on your camera and your audio to state your question. Hello, ma'am. I have a question. Uh, thank you. I would like to commend also the efforts of the and uh, the efforts of the speaker for um, that um, information. And um, um, since we're here in Samis Occidental, ma'am, I would just like to know if there are identified or what are the common or commonly identified migratory birds we have here in Misamis Occidental. That's okay, all. thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Ace. Okay, so for that question, um, one slide, we're in the second uh, information that there are over 600 migratory birds visited uh, visiting in the Philippines. Those five, okay, those five question, five images were recorded. Uh, were the images of the species recorded by the uh, the census conducted last January 2020. Okay, we have the little egret, okay, the intermediate egret, the great egret, katubitong mga puti, natagas o mga tiil, nakatumutungtong sa kabaw. Okay, those, okay. These are the five, okay, five, uh, five species recorded uh, in that census last January 2021. Okay, so these were observed in Malaubang Bonifacio Mangrove Reserves as well as in Sinakaban Wetlands. So you were from Aloran, sir, right? So were you able to observe this species? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Only the, the tulabong. Or the, uh, 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 so yeah. tulabong, pari-pariha lang sila. Pari-pariha sila na no? But looking closely, yeah. so they are different species. Tumuli ang katong saga makita na to sa mga basakan, no? naglupad-lupad. Sa basakan, na sa mga dapin sa dagat, sa mabaw sa mangrove. So those actually are the species recorded, sir, during the conduct of the census. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Yuna and uh, Honorable Ace from the municipality of Aloran. So we can entertain more questions. And now let us hear from the Maritime, the College of Maritime Education of Misamis University. Sir? Yes, good morning, Mariona. Yes, sir. Good morning, Kap. 
I just wonder because you said that migratory birds takes a long trip towards their voyage. Now I I don't know what will happen during night time with the navigate. Are they navigating on daytime only? Sir, um based on katubitang how, how are they going to navigate? So bird, uh, migratory birds are also intelligent, di ba? Uh, yes. Compass during daylight, they're going to use the sun. And during the night time, they're going to use the stars. Okay, so apart from that, they're going to smell, okay? Smell the um, sea, no? Also the wind coming from the mountain ranges. So those were used by this intelligent migratory birds to travel. So in other words, some maybe will travel in daytime, but others also will continue travel. Okay, di ba? Namatay several birds will continuously travel, especially if they have this um, kanabitang daghan kayo na reserve, fat reserve in their body. Especially kung physically, though all of them should be physically ready, but again, mas naiuban din na mga birds na mupadayon o lupad. Okay, mupadayon o migrate, mupadayon travel, especially those long distance travelers. Okay, so even night time, they're going to migrate. So, but those larger birds, they, are, they were going to migrate on daytime. So, they rely on thermals so, man sila specific. So, nagi so mo how, travel on nighttime. So, how long kaha will they travel? More than 12 hours or more than 24 hours? Okay, so, uh, more than sa uban siguro sir, more than. Okay, especially, lagyo bitaw juga itong mga kuan, mga routes. Mm -hmm. Okay, only katuramang yung Central Asia lang ang flyway mo, yung shortest route. Okay, given manggot um, daghan kayo na mga barriers. So, it depends, sir. Okay, it depends on the travel. Okay, so just like humans, ma, sir, na kung makakita o bad weather, they're going to stop. Okay, they're going to stop in an area where they need to rest. Okay, they're going to lose. Okay, kung ma-okay na po ng weather, then they need to travel. It really depends. It's just like um, they are traveling one place to another because of those reasons for them to survive so sila siguro pag travel na sila yung mga uh, they going to meet many challenges so maybe they need to stop then mo stop sila but if ever okay lang along silang travel then they need to continue it really depends sir on the different factors affecting so what do you think is the average speed of their flight more than how many knots? How many kilometers per hour? Okay, so with that, sir, wala pa ko idea at this point. Okay, wala ko kay kana. May alak ko as a each bird has its own way. So kumbaga, yeah. each bird is unique. So they have as to the average. Honestly, ako wala ko idea. It's just that the the longest distance katung travel by the actor turn mauto siya so some birds will travel very far continuously but our birds will pagka yeah. daytime lang sa so kung magabi nga na sir thank you okay thank you ma'am you're welcome sir. okay uh, perhaps we can entertain one last question about the first topic coming from our participants in the College of Maritime Education again, Sir Angelo Kapatingan. Ma'am, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, as you have uh, discussed earlier that uh, birds are migrating in our country, in particular, uh, Misamis Occidental every year. So, my question is, will they be not a threat also in our uh, health? Meaning that uh, uh, they might bring uh, some diseases also here in our place. So how can we that, contain them? There's really a possibility that they bring diseases, sir. Especially one of the reasons, diba? One of the reasons why they need to travel or need to, to migrate. Because um, to, prevent, to prevent diseases, that could be really a threat, sir. Okay? There's really a possibility that this species will bring some diseases okay so diba we have this avian flu yeah yes ma'am yes ma oh, 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 so possibly will, uh, na siya, sir so as so to the question as to the how are we going to
contain them um to contain i meaning sir we're not going to to let them so, come maybe we we'll come in our area is that it no uh, maybe uh maybe i think uh, avoid uh, personal contact oh yes Probably. sir but uh, oh the containment yes sir oh maybe sir. yes that's the very one touching hunting okay but again sir we cannot do that that's unless we will prove that they really have with the disease yes ma'am thank yes, you sir. thank you sir Thank you very much again, Ma'am Yunaline, for that very wonderful uh, lecture on the essential information on migratory birds. And also thank you for those participants who have um, interacted with our speaker. So now let me call on Ma'am Golda Gray Sultan to award the Certificate of Appreciation to our first speaker. Good morning. So, in behalf of the organizers of the World Migratory Bird Day and Misamis University's partners, the EAAFP, DENR, DILG, and the ACD, we would like to present this Certificate of Appreciation to Ma'am Yunalin L. Villantes for sharing her invaluable knowledge and expertise to the selected Sangguniang Kabataang Chairman of Misamis Occidental Philippines during the World Migratory Bird Day Lecture and Workshop 2021. Given this eighth day of May 2021, Year of the Lord at Misamis University, Osama City, Misamis Occidental Philippines, signed by our University President, Dr. Karen Delgina de Leon, and Chief Executive of the East Asian Australasian Plyley Partnership, Mr. Doug Watkins. Thank you very much, Ms. Thomas University and all the partners. Thank you very much. Let us welcome the second speaker who will talk about wildlife resource conservation or Republic Act of 9147. He is one of the leaders in conserving and protecting our natural resources. He finished his undergraduate degree of Bachelor of Science in Forestry with Latin honors in Mindanao State University, Marawi City, and attained his Juris Doctor here in Misamis University. He is the Development Management Officer for of Department of Environment and Natural Resources, Senro Ozami City, no other than Forester Dennis Wap. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, thank you for that uh, wonderful and very inspiring uh, introduction. Uh, before, uh, before anything else, uh, I would like to extend our uh, thanks to the host and sponsor of this uh, activity, the Misamis uh, University, uh, led by uh, Dr. Karen De Leon, uh, uh, together with uh, ma'am Grace Villanueva, the Executive Director of NUSIP, uh, and the other partners of this uh, of the conservation efforts for the migratory bird. Uh, I am now going to uh, discuss to you the relevant laws that ensure the protection of the migratory birds in the Philippines. Um, may I know if I am clear of my signal and audio to everyone? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're excluding Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, well, let me proceed. No, uh, again, uh, after knowing all those uh, importance of the migratory bird, uh, that is why we are celebrating it today. Uh, as the as, and it was uh, a discussed thoroughly by our first uh, keynote speaker. Uh, the importance, the 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 threats that the migratory birds are facing uh, while they are on their journey to different uh, parts of the world because uh, that is their role. They just migrate from one place to another. Uh, uh, considering also that the Philippines is one of the signatory of many conventions, uh, treaties, uh, agreements uh, in order to protect the wildlife resources including the migratory birds. So. The Philippines is also not behind uh, in uh, legislating important 
uh, legislations uh, towards the protection and conservation of our wildlife, uh, including our migratory birds. So next slide, please. As a background, uh, as you can see here uh, in my slide, uh, there's a particular uh, legisl uh, important legislation no? uh, that the Philippines has, uh, the Wildlife Resources Conservation and Protection Act or the Republic Act number 9147 that was enacted and approved on July 30, 2001. But beforehand, uh, when, uh, before this uh, legislation, we have already old laws na uh, naka-embed sa itong mga pano, karang statutes. Uh, first, uh, let me enumerate this. No? Uh, the Act 1798 on the Protection of Animal Life that was on October 19, uh, 1907. Act 2590 on the Protection of Game and Feeds uh, and Fish. Other, uh, another one is the Act 3983 on the protection of wildlife flowers and plants. Uh, and other special laws on tamarals and corals. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Again, uh, <clears throat> being the primary, uh, primary, primary country in conserving the wildlife resources, uh, the Philippines, uh, uh, through the entity, uh, uh, through the 1987 Constitution, uh, has already embraced or uh, instilled into the, the very foundation of our, uh, of our law, the, the Constitution, the different provisions that it has, so that uh, the people and the people or the one country may be guided on how to conserve the, uh, the uh, on how to conserve and protect our wildlife resources. So uh, uh, first, uh, let me uh, state first the uh, specific uh, uh, provision of the 1987 Constitution, which says that all lands of the public domain, fisheries, forests, or timber, wildlife, flora and fauna, and other natural resources are owned by the state. So in that uh, particular provision, uh, all those things, no, uh, including wildlife, are owned by the state. And then another provision consists that the, uh, the state <clears throat> shall protect and advance the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology in accord with the rhythm and harmony of nature. So by this uh, very provision of the law, uh, of the constitution, the state has to ensure the protection advance sa, pano, the right of the people to a balanced and helpful ecology. So by just... Uh, uh, by just uh, protecting and conserving our natural resources, uh, including the wildlife, the we are uh, we are assured of our uh, we are assured of the right of, uh, of the of our right to a balanced and helpful ecology. Now, next slide, please. Now, what are these uh, state policies as uh, uh, being embedded in our final or the previous slide? Previous slide, sir. Ah, okay, okay. See, next slide. Go next slide, next slide. And then, oh. <clears throat> aside from the provis uh, special provisions about uh, wildlife resources conservation that are embedded already in our constitution, we have also uh, statutes no? uh, or laws that are uh, legislated by the Congress uh, just to ensure the uh, protection of our uh, environment, uh, including the wildlife resources. So, we have this Republic Act 7596 or the NIPAS Act. Act. Uh, this was already amended under 1938 with the expand, uh, expanded NIPAS Act. No? So along this line, uh, this is the uh, very <clears throat> primary of the law uh, to secure for the Filipino, uh, Filipino people of present and future generations the perpetual existence of all native plants and animals through the establishment of a comprehensive system of integrated protected areas within the classification of national part as provided for in the constitution. So the, the legislation of this particular act is in accordance with the provision of the constitution. Another important legislation is the uh, Republic Act 19, uh, 1972 or the National Caves and uh, Cave Resources Management and Protection Act, which says, 
conservation, protection, and management caves and cave resources, resources which includes animal life and prime uh, and life naturally occurring in caves. Now, ano nga aman ta ng mga balao dano aside from 9147? Because migratory birds are usually migrating from uh, one place to another. So, uh, those places that they are visiting might be might be our Panay Pass areas or they are anchoring uh, themselves on the caves in the Philippines. So that if those migratory birds uh, can found in those areas, they are subject of this by statutes. The Naipas Act, if they are in the uh, protected areas, or the 1972, if they are in our pan caves. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, another uh, state policies in, in statutes is the role of its uh, government uh, instrumentalities like the local government units, which says that it shall share with the national government the responsibility in the management and maintenance of ecological balance within their territorial jurisdiction, subject to the provision of this code and national policy. So our local government code itself has mandated our local government units to ensure also the protection of our, uh, uh, of our natural resources for the maintenance and ecological balance. Another provision is that the LGOs shall protect the environment and impose appropriate penalties for acts which endanger the environment, including dynamic fishing and other forms of destructive fishing, illegal logging and smuggling of plugs, smuggling of natural resources, products, and of endangered species of flora and fauna. Now, uh, we are very fortunate because our participants here are the Asanguniang, ano, Karasanguniang Kabataan. So they are a part of the code LGU sports, no? Uh, they are also uh, legislators at their own respective uh, jurisdiction. So meaning uh, our SK have also the, uh, their their uh, a big role in the protection of our uh, of our wildlife resources, including the migratory birds, uh, just to <clears throat> just to protect it from any destruction, no? So. The SK can, uh, can recommend to the Barangay Council or the SK Federated can recommend to the uh, kind of local legislators and uh, uh, legislators to enact uh, particular laws to protect these uh, migratory birds. Now, another question. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, another is uh, another uh, state policy no, no, that is embedded in the statute is the April law. So April uh, quite refers to the uh, uh, to the public, uh, the, uh, uh, the public domain of our uh, brothers and sisters who are IPs. No? So uh, they are also mandated, uh, they have the responsibility to preserve, restore, and maintain a balanced ecology in their ancestral domain by protecting the flora and fauna. So next slide, please. So uh, let me now uh, <clears throat> discuss to you the general provisions of the Wildlife Act or the RA9147. So what are the objectives of RA9147? Uh, I think uh, the, uh, well, this was uh, already initially uh, presented by the first speaker. No? So let me reiterate that. Uh, what are the objectives? Number one, uh, to conserve and protect wildlife species and their habitats to promote ecological balance and uh, and enhance biological diversity. So it is very clear that uh, this a particular law is, uh, is being legislated to ensure the uh, conservation and protection of our wildlife species. Number two, to regulate the collection and trade of wildlife. Uh, although uh, the, the collection and trade is prohibited under this law, but uh, there are certain cases no, na uh, pwede siya, paano ka na pwede sa mga exhibition siya, na pwede na ito sa tubutan. Uh, next is to pursue with due regard to the national interest, the Philippine commitment to international conventions on the protection of wildlife and their habitat. So, akong Osmon, as I said uh, earlier that the Philippines is a signatory to many conventions, uh, uh, treaties or agreements no, with regards to the uh, protection of the wildlife. So, but that's why 
uh, RA 91471 uh, was enacted into law. Now, the court uh, objective is that to initiate or support scientific studies on the conservation of biological diversity. So we are also in the forefront uh, in supporting these initiatives in the scientific studies on how to conserve this uh, particular wildlife species. Next slide, please. So what is the scope of application uh, of this law? It is enforceable for all wildlife species found in all areas of the country, including the night pass areas and their critical habitats. Now, migratory birds, uh, migratory birds are migrating to our country. No, once they are here in our country, they become uh, they become the subject of our jurisdiction. So that's why the law is but the law is also enforceable. Uh, enforceable for the protections of the uh, of this wildlife species. No. So once we have that law, na na tay jurisdiction sa ila na kinahan nato sila protectionan using this particular uh, legislation. Asikan a uh, unknown genera or unknown species or strains of known species that will later on be discovered or identified as occurring in the country. So those species that are still unknown or an uh, wala pa nato na ilhi appeal siya aning sa application aning balauda. Ah. Uh, a third, apply to exotic or foreign species as defined in the joint IRR, which are subject to trade, are maintained, cultured, and or bred in, in captivity or propagated in the country, including those that have been illegally introduced. So meaning, uh, there are some cases na pano kanang natay, pan kanang natay mga importation o pan kanang adalon, adalon na mga, na mga wildlife, for resources into the country so naana siya ay mga uh, subject na sa regulation sa 91 RA 9147 next slide so in this particular uh, paano kanang uh, sa 9147 uh, there are entities or uh, specific pa local uh, uh, government agencies that has kan jurisdiction sa uh, kanang laing wildlife species number one, the PCSD no Ang PCSD mo man ang katong kwan uh, it is in the province of Palawan no all wildlife species with their terrestrial or marine and aquatic resources found in the province of Palawan in accordance with the provisions of RA 7611 or the SAP law consistent with RA 8550 Fisheries Code Republic Act 8485 na Animal Welfare Act and RA 7586 so, ang nice jurisdiction ani ng mga wildlife species ang ang PCSD. Then the DNR, sa may jurisdiction sa DNR, all terrestrial plant and animal species, or turtles and tortoise, uh, uh, tortoises, and wetland species, including crocodiles, water birds, and all amphibians and dugong. So, muna yung jurisdiction sa DNR. So, katong mga migratory birds, yung may abot sa tuwa, Ang nice jurisdiction na na is ang DNR. Now, ang, ang Department of Agriculture na sila ikuan po, kan jurisdiction. All declared aquatic critical habitats, all aquatic resources, including but not limited to fishes, aquatic plants, invertebrates, and all marine mammals except dugong. Uh, dugong and turtles are, are within the jurisdiction of the Dinner. Next slide, please. Okay. So let us now come to the prohibited acts, no, as stated under RA 9147. So, in the previous discussion of our uh, of our first keynote speaker, she uh, discusses to us the ano kanang the threats and threats na pwede mahatag na to ngatos sa tumang mga migratory bird, so unsao man nato pag address ang threats, so that's why kining RA 9147 naghatag siya guidance nato unsa ito mga prohibited acts na kinahanglan dili gisa pagbuhaton, and mind you, for the information of the of everybody, this prohibited acts as defined under RA 9147 uh, 9147 are criminal in nature, so anyone 
who uh, committed an act uh, of these following acts that I am going to uh, discuss to you. One is uh, a criminal in nature and you can be in prison kung ma kung ka kung ma found guilty ka kung makasuhan ka. So bukat ni siya. So what are these prohibited acts? Number one, killing and destroying. So patio na to o ato i-destroy ang ato mga wildlife, ang ato puna, ang, ang ato puna or plura. Oh, so in this uh, uh, in relation to this migratory bird day, kung kung natay mga uh, migratory birds na makita na to sa tong palibot, then if we will kill and destroy them, so it is it is punishable under RA 9147. Another prohibited act is the inflicting injury. So, mo inflict ang injury uh, especially sa pre, uh, reproductive system sa ano sa kahayop. So kung imo siyang kwan, kung imo siyang uh, uh, inflict ang injury na murag na alter ang iyang reproductive system o na impair ang iyang reproductive system, it is punishable under the law. Next is the prohibited acts in the critical areas, destruction of the natural habitat. So unsa man siya? So kining mga critical areas declared ni sa under sa NAIPAS Act na to, na ay pusay mga particular dito na mga pa prohibited acts. So if you commit any of those acts, you can be a uh, punishable under RA9147. Now the fourth is the introduction, reintroduction or restocking. So nag introduce once a person is a uh, committing introduction, nag introduce kang line species sa isa ka particular pala lugar o nag or nag reintroduce o nag restock ka without any authority from the concern agency that's a uh, uh, that act is prohibited under 9147 uh fifth is the trading of wildlife so giniing pagmamaligya na to no kini pamaligya na to so it does not only cover sa ato mga kwan remember uh, this prohibited acts under 9147 does not also uh, does not also kwan ka nang covered sa mga uh, does not only cover the panopuna including flora so ato nang hinunduman ako lang ikwan ka nang ako lang I e, isulti gamay na kanang ato mga plantita karon mga plantito na nauso na to karon gumikan aning pandemic na nahimutang plantita o plantito kasi to it yod nang inyong gihawiran ng mga tanom dili gikan sa wild kay pwede mo kasuhan ani na kwan kining acts so next is the collecting hunting or possessing so nagkulik ka gihunt mo ang wildlife or nagpossess ka mismo so for example, kung naakay sa inyong balay, naakay mga wildlife species dito na imong gikuptan, you are liable under this uh, particular law. Next, gathering or destroying of activeness. So katulad ng mga salang salanggam na nasa tong palibot, kung ato na sang gikuha or ato sang gi, gi destroyed, so ato giguba, so uh, pwede ta makasuhan under this law. Next is the maltreating or inflicting other injuries. So kung imo siyang kung imo siyang gi ako ah, imo siyang gikulik or gihan tapos nag-inflict ang injury sa among wildlife again it is prohibited under RA 9147. Last is the transporting of wildlife. So preparehan ani sa trading no na i-transport nimo baligya nimo sa laing tawo or sa laing lugar. So that is uh, kapanisabol under RA 9147. So, katong, uh, katong pangutana ganina, no, na kung, kung mag uh, kanus aka, pwede ka, uh, ang ato bang mga langgam, nag, kuhan ba na siya, kanang, uh, might be a career of, kanang, kuhan, kibali, uh, kanang disease, no, kanang tinuod yun na siya. So, una, uh, 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 kibali, how to avoid that, kung saan na itong pag-avoid na dita kay Bisag usa kanindot atong mga langgam na motrabi na to dire naghatag sila beauty na to pero unfortunately it is an established fact na di might be a career o pano kasam a pathogens a like bird flu na pwede sang mahimong pandemic so unsaon na to siya paglikay di ana so kining number 1 you know killing and destroying so di kita pwede na to di ba e, ato sang ihan ato sang ipusis so posible ta na makakuha diha og kanang sakit so delikado gina siya so dili kita magpataka og ang ato lang ang, ang ang migratory birds na siguro is for the 
uh, for the eyes only. Ato nang tanawon sila. Pero di rin ato sila pwede hilabdan kay, kay gawas na pa-prohibited acts na siya, pwede po na siya na makakuha pagsakit niya ng mga pananggama. Next. So, ako lang, uh, as uh, earlier uh, discussed by our first keynote speaker, uh, naghatag sa dito mga kwandos, no? katong mga kinahalan na buhaton para po na makatabang ta on how to, uh, so that we can help also the government efforts kung saan na ito pag-protect ang atong migratory bird. Ako din rin, naghatag lang kong rules po, nagdugang lang ko ito, uh, lima rin po na ikabok ako ah, uh, Pa-uldod, uh, pa this are general statement lang na akong matag. So number one, kung sa may roles ni mo na kinahalan na ito na pag ka na pag to, no? So number one, abuwi doing what are prohibited acts under existing laws. So what are those prohibited acts? Ato lang, if, uh, we will refrain ourselves from doing it. So as simple as that, makatabang na ta on saan na ito pag uh, protect or conserve ang atong wildlife resources, including the migratory bird. Second, report to local authorities or concerned law enforcement agencies if there are people doing the legal acts. So as simply as that, you just report. If you learn or have knowledge on uh, particular uh, prohibited acts uh, done or conducted by some people, no? so para ma-address, uh, para ma-prosecute na ito itong mga tawana. Third is, be an active partner of the government efforts to protect and restore the natural habitat of the wildlife in your respective uh, communities. So, kinanang magiging kwanta ang mga skitserman kaya naman mo sa matang barangay naman mo diyan na pag anagin mo sa community level. So, please be an active partner. No? Kung, uh, for example, kung nai kanang pariya sa uh, discuss ganina na in the case of Misamis Occidental, na atay na-identified na Uh, pa mga lugar no mga mangrove areas or wetlands na nadiya ga kwa nadiya ga angkor ang atong mga kwa no kanang nagkaangkorin sa atong mga or nag temporary stay ang atong mga migratory bird so kana siya kana siya na particular na mga ecosystem mo na ang natural habitat sa atong mga kwa no sa atong migratory bird so katabangan ato ang gobyerno sa pag restore or pag protect diyan na so by just kwa no kanang simple kwa suro kung mangrove area kung if if the uh, if that particular mangrove area is uh, is already denuded so by just simply kwan uh, doing the planting or replanting or investment planting na kwan uh, pwede ta na at our own initiative or we will participate uh kwan those uh, for rest uh, restoration efforts no na i-conduct sa atong mga government agencies so for Help the concerned agencies in monitoring the influx or the migration of migratory birds in your areas for documentation purposes as basis in planning for the next course of action need to be undertaken. So, kinahanglan po tayo mag-participate. So, ang DNR, in the case sa DNR, nami gitawag o annual, annual bird counting, no? Uh, gibuhat na mo ito atong, uh, for this year, gibuhat na mo ito itong January 2021. Amo na siyang gikuan, no? Kanang gi gi atong gi monitor o gi ihap nag bird counting ta dito para ma identify na to unsa to mga particular na migratory birds na moy usual na mibisita sa atong kwa lugar so for documentation pang purposes para ma makita po nato dito kung unsa ni na mga particular na mga species basin po ni sila o basin kini na mga particular species na poy mga ah, kibali kanang history or kanang sa ubang lugar na nakita ni sila na nagdala ni sila pathogens so by doing that ta makakana ta makatabang na ta sa gobyerno no para pa, para ma-report na to kung unsa ni mga particular species para pod na ma-preserve nato sila at the same time malikayan nato ang pagpasibol na kan kanang disease na pwede makuha nato sa walang gam and the last ang last good na akong buhaton siguro is spread these roles to everyone. Meaning, uh, we will not only take this, uh, kwan, this learnings or knowledge kwan sa atong kwan, uh, kwan ka na sa atong kagulingon. Or dili, pagkundili, we will, uh, we will spread the news. We will spread to our constituents 
sa atong communities kung unsa ni na mga particular na mga pangkana prohibited acts o unsay angay buhaton para ma-preserve nato ang atong migratory bird. So next. Okay, uh, I think that was the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, I hope that everyone has learned something out of my presentation. No? Uh, because uh, studying this uh, loss or relevant loss, uh, dapat may bawa na to. So again, thank you everyone and fun good morning. Thank you very much, Sir Dennis, for imparting us the do's and don'ts that will guide us in helping protect and conserve the migratory birds as well as the ecosystem that serve as their habitat. Um, now, Sir Dennis yes, is yes, ready to um, answer questions <clears throat> from our participants. Ah, uh, ma'am, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. Ma'am, I have to call ma'am. Uh, uh, considering na dili naman good ako good ang nadire no sa pa virtual. Uh, yes, sir. We have also our kwano kanang sinro our uh, Porister Gilre uh, kwan kabatuan and together with our colleague. So yes, perhaps they can also uh, answer or address some questions from the participants. Uh, thank you, okay, ma'am. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So uh, participants, you may address your questions to. Uh, Sir Dennis Wab, our speaker, and also to our uh, City Environment Natural Resource Officer in Azami City, uh, Forrester Gilray. We can entertain uh, perhaps two questions. Do you have any question regarding the laws and regulations <coughs> to protect the migratory birds in the ecosystem? Kindly uh, raise your hand if you have any question. Okay, so we have um, one from the College of Maritime Education, Misamis University. Sir, kindly uh, state your question. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Uh, my question is yes, about the prohibited acts of RA 9147, which says that killing and destroying and inflicting injury to species now, is it applicable to the high seas, like for example in the West Philippine Sea? Uh, I think, sir, it is, sir. Okay, sir. Oh, so very good. So we can do something okay, sir, about uh, it. Oh, that's, uh, uh, that's why, sir, uh, uh, some, uh, some, uh, kwan, uh, some legislators are uh, encouraged to president you don't know na atong i apply and atong balawad sa with Philippine Sea because it is part of our one uh, explosive economic zone of which yeah. our our kwan no kanang panatay jurisdiction atong balaod na to dito so kwan kanang kwan unfortunately no ang ang mga Chinese nagkuan dito <laughs> nagandirtik og fishing dito exploit na to ang uh, exploit nila ang atong resources dito dayon bizo ang kwan gobyerno gyud murag wala uh, wala gid ka kahit na address sana but anyway, dili man ko na sa sayong na isyo po. Nakita na ito kung sa sakasisitib. So, dili kita kakuhan kayo, no? Uh, okay, sir. Thank you very much. Because I'm just wondering, uh, basing ko ilabot ko sa atong jurisdiction, dili. Is it only on the LGU? So, uh, thank sir, you very much. Po, sir. Okay, do we have um, any question? One last question from our participant. So I assume that our participants have no further question regarding the rules and regulations or the um, Wildlife Conservation Act. So may I call on again on Ms. Golda Grace Sultan to award the certificate to our second speaker, Forrester Il, uh, Dennis Wap. Again, good morning. On behalf again of Misamis University and the partners of Misamis University for the World Migratory Bird Day, the EAASP, the EMR, the ILG, and the ACB, 
we would like to present to you for certificate of appreciation to Horace Perdomo Award for sharing his invaluable knowledge and expertise to the selected Sangguniang Kabataang Chairman of Masamic Occidental Philippines during the World Migratory Bird Day Lecture and Workshop 2021. Given this eighth day of May 2021, Year of the Lord, at Misamis University, Ozami City, Misamis Occidental Philippines, signed by our President, Dr. Karen Bolina Ifdelion, and the Chief Executive of the East Asian Australasian Flyway Partnership, Mr. Doug Watkins. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, um, perhaps uh, we have one more last question from our um, SK chairman from the municipality of Aloran. Perhaps uh, anyone from Senator Ozamis can um, address Honorable Ace, can we uh, raise your question, please? Uh, hello. Hello again. Morning. Morning, sir. Um, thank oh, you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, yes, sir. Um, um, I just gonna, um, would like to ask, sir, if we have um, already adopted or have a localized um, uh, ordinance or law here in Ms. Oak or in, uh, particularly in Uzamis that um, really concerns the migratory bird because for, um, bag -opadud ako personally, it is really new to me that there are um, uh, certain laws that protect for the birds, but here in our locality, sir, like Zamis, do we already have existing ordinance for that? That's uh, uh, yes, sir. No, uh, thank you for that question. But uh, perhaps I cannot uh, give you the comment, uh, kwa, no? kwa lang, uh, specific uh, answer to that. Kaya ako po, bago pa po ko diri sa Osamis, diliki ko sweeto sa kwan sa sa kasosami city kung naba sa mga lokal ordinance na nakanayin na, 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 na. Pero kung ako yun ay bawaan ang, ano, ang atong provincial government na nag-inlock o uh, uh, provincial environment code office dito na tanan na o dito na tanan naka-embed o naka-install ang mga ang mga kung ano ka ng mga possible kung ano provisions na pwede na to na mahimong reference and guidance sa pag-protect sa atong uh, kung ano sa atong kanang wildlife resources. Uh, sir, uh, kung pwede akong itro ang, ang question sa among pano si Inar Officer, si Forrester Gildry Cabatuan, uh, considering that uh, kuan ka na he is the Senior Officer of Senior Osami City, maybe uh, he, uh, it, he has uh, some pano, knowledge on that uh, particular query, sir. Uh, Sir Gilri, I think you have to um, uh, set the microphone on your laptop. I think the settings or um, uh, you may type the answer and then and then we will read it for everybody okay, um, sorry for the uh, technical difficulties no? and then um, according to Senro Gilri Kabatuan uh, only the provincial environmental code at the municipal level but then uh, at the municipal level wala pa so only the provisional environmental code ang naa, but then ang municipal level kay wala pa. I hope that we have answered your question, Honorable um, Ace. That's okay, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, um, Forrester Gilri, for answering the question. So... All right, so we are already done with the first part of our activity this morning. And for our beloved participants who stayed with us in Facebook, you may now fill up the evaluation form to get a certificate for this international event. The link 
um, will be found at the comment section of the live stream. And uh, let us all together sing, fly, and soar like a bird. At this moment, let us now proceed with the presentation of the action plan to be led by one of the active community extension facilitators of MUSEP, Forrester Bobby Alaman. Happy World Migratory Bird Day 2021, everyone. This action planning is for the Iskitcher person participants of this online event. Our distinguished speakers enlighten and give us ample knowledge about migratory birds and how to protect them. Ma'am Yuna, Yuna Lil emphasized on her last slide that we must work as a team. So as is clear in your respective coastal barangays in Misamis Occidental, your action plan focuses on the activities that will lead to the conservation of our migratory bird and wetland areas. We have designed a template we have already sent to you in your respective email addresses. You can download and fill it up the action plan. So here is the example of our action plan. So in the action plan, we have the activity, the objective, budget, time frame, expected output, responsible person, and the last column is the means of verification. So suggested activities includes postal cleanup, passing of resolution for the protection of migratory bird, IEC campaign or rally about migratory bird and other activities suggested by the speakers. So we encourage the SK leaders to fill up the form and also let their barangay captain sign it. For further inquiries, you can contact Forrester Jerusalem Sikalago of MOSEP and we will collect the said action plan during the distribution of your certificates and posters on May 10, 2021. Thank you very much and we will celebrate World Migratory Bird Day every day. The action plan for your reading reference. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Bobby. So this um, action plan um, is available at the link that was sent in the chat box. So Sangguni Ang Kabataan Chairman, now that you all are the ambassadors and ambassadresses for the conservation of migratory birds, let us all together again sing, fly, soar like a bird. And again, if you have further questions regarding the action plan, do not hesitate to contact us. And the contact person for that is Forrester Jersam Calago. And we will be willing to help you and, and to assist you. Okay, to officially close the program, may I call on the Dynamic Environmental and Natural Resources Officer of Zami City, Forrester Gilri Kabatuan for his closing. Good noon. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay. I exited and uh, ibalik ko aron madukong ko. Uh, first of all, I would start to thank the uh, organizer of this uh, activity, no? uh, the Misamish University uh, Community Extension Program, si Ma'am Grace, and also to the MU uh, President, si Dr. De Leon. And the East Asian Australian Partnership Library Secretariat, uh, my co-employees in the DNR, the DILG, uh, represented by the uh, ski chairman, no? uh, invited ski chairman, uh, as what has been stated earlier, uh, you are the youngs who can be molded and who can rally, uh, maybe support in as much as legislation and actions are concerned at the local level. And also to Dr. Mundita Lim, our BMB director uh, then and now the director of the Asian Center for Biodiversity. Uh, students who are here and also other partner agencies, thank you for having uh, participated in this kind of uh, virtual uh, forum. Uh, it is very educational and uh, I hope that this will not be the last and we can still make uh, another one that look like this. No? And because of the pandemic, uh, 
and I hope that the number would increase. No. Uh, on the part of the DNR, let me just uh, state that we are at the forefront of having uh, implemented uh, activities pursuant to the mandate of the department, one of which is the conservation of the natural resources, including the biodiversity there. You know, it's one of the main uh, ten point uh, program of the present DNR administration as secretary. General Roy A. Simato. And at the, at the field level, uh, one of the concrete uh, uh, activity that we are conducting is the soon-to-be established uh, uh, protected area uh, under the Eni Pass, the Malaobang Magum, Magumbang Magum Swamp Forest Reserve. We're on the stage at this very moment of public consultation and demarcation uh, of the said uh, protected area, uh, uh, knowing that it is uh, provided us significant, its presence provided significant uh, benefits to us, not only for us, but also to the migratory birds and all wildlife that can be found along the coast and along the mangrove area. So I hope that the Samish University and all those uh, LGUs who are within this uh, uh, area can participate and can help us, can support us in this uh, type of endeavor. No? So again, uh, I hope that this uh, we learn something and this will be a start and springboard for us to make a concrete uh, action because we'll be having our uh, action plan which will be collated by uh, MOSEP and I hope that we can meet again and thank you for supporting pro the programs of the DNR and on behalf of the DNR uh, I would like to thank you and I thank you and uh, uh, I hope that we learn something from this uh, uh, event uh, thank you very much and good noon Thank you, Sir Gilry. And uh, we would like to um, commend your office for your undying support to our endeavors. So now we have um, posted the link to the post evaluation form, which is a requirement for the certificate of this event. So we would like to thank everyone for celebrating the World Migratory Birthday with us. Once again, happy Migratory Birthday. And before we leave the meeting, let us wear our best smile for some photo ops. Uh, I would like to request everybody to turn on their camera and then wear your best smile. So just turn on your camera and then um, we will try to fit in one screen. Okay, one, two, ready, smile. Sige lang, take lang. One, two, ready, smile. Okay, next, team. One, two, ready, smile. Okay, I think we're good. So please do not forget to fill up the post-evaluation form because that is a requirement to getting the certificate of this international celebration.
Okay. Uh, we would like to announce the coastal cleanup and migratory bird watching at 3 p.m. to be held at Barangay Mialin, Clarin. The meetup will be at Barangay uh, Mialin, Katong sa basketball court. Okay. And then we would also like to thank the, our representative from um, Maritime Police. Thank you, sir, for um, attending. And then I wish you all have a nice day ahead. Thank you once again. Thank you, ma'am.